Hi friends, today we are going to have a small interview with our uh, successful candidate, Dr. Nanmaral. And uh, we are very happy to announce that he has stopped the AIMS merit list and is second in the common merit list for uh, DM pediatric critical care. And um, we are going to discuss with him regarding what is the way that he had prepared for the examinations and uh, how did he go about attempting the question, what was his mentality and uh, what would be um, his viewpoint on uh, taking this exam uh, for like his, his viewpoint on taking this exam which could help others to take the same so i welcome dr nanmar and congratulations first of all to you yes sir hi sir good afternoon sir thank you so much for the warm welcome sir yes sir thank you uh, so uh dr nanmar and can you just give a brief background about yourself so that um, I would, the audience will also be aware about you. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, sir, I am uh, Dr. Nanmar. Uh, I did my undergraduate uh, medical education in uh, Madras Medical College. Uh, I did my uh, PG in uh, Jip Mercer, uh, from 2020 to December 2022. Uh, then I worked as a senior resident in one year in Jip Mer. Uh, then I am currently serving as a senior, senior resident in uh, Prince Pondicherry. So, so I gave my exam in this uh, session, sir. Okay, great. That's great. So you have, you have enough work okay, okay experience. So, and how did you like? What was your uh, efforts that was put into uh, in order to crack this examinations? Like, did you go through the previous year's question paper like routinely? What people used to do? They go through the previous year's question papers. They used to put some MCQ books. Um, did you do anything different? apart from these things in order to crack this exam? Uh, sir, uh, so the uh, usual preparation strategy will be the, the Rogers handbook, what the seniors used to say. So I read that Rogers handbook. Apart from that, the ICU protocols is that one book which I completely read. Uh, then apart from this, uh, the MCQ questions which I have answered is from uh, Zibberman, sir. So Zibberman, uh, each chapter backside, there will be a list of MCQ questions. Uh, that one helped me much. Uh, like what the critical thinking, uh, the conceptual thinking will be very good uh, if we solve the questions. And uh, apart from that, uh, PCCM quiz uh, question papers were there. So those were also uh, helping, sir. And uh, uh, obviously the marrow questions, uh, the uh, uh, the queue back, and it's just uh, slightly uh, the many few chapters are now only we are uh, re, that is put into the app uh, but the mock test which was in the marrow also i was uh, solving that so that also helped me much in uh, cracking this exam sir great great and um, uh, what how did you go about for general pediatrics so you were describing about the specialty aspects so did you especially prepare for general pediatrics or uh, uh, you did more? How, how did you separate your work? You concentrated more on general pediatrics and some amount for specialty yes, or equal amounts. Or how did you go about with that? Yes, sir. Uh, the usual uh, weightage strategy will be around 70 percent will be the core subject in the in, a, in the 80 questions. Around 30% will usually come from the other than our core subjects, sir. That's the usual understanding. Sometimes the percentage may vary also. So those who have completed MD just by uh, may be find very easy to crack the general pediatrics and other systemic pediatrics question. Uh, for me, I was giving this was the third attempt for me to give this exam, sir. So. For me, uh, initial exams, it was uh, more easier, general pediatrics question. Later, I was concentrating more importantly only on the uh, important topics of each system, sir. I didn't go much into any systemic pediatrics. So only important topics in each system I was concentrating, sir. So that was my strategy okay. for other things. I was more concentrating on uh, critical care subjects and the core critical care topics only, sir. Great, great. So what you said is you you wanted to use focus more into speciality. You felt like uh, focusing on speciality questions is required to crack this particular exams. How did this platform particularly help you? Like the Marrow platform help you 
in order to um, uh, give more edge for the specialty courses, especially these talks on all the other specialized subjects that you, you are able to see in Maru. Okay, sir. Uh, obviously, sir. Uh, so the apart from reading the topics, the videos, what I what I have watched from the marrow, uh, especially our uh, critical care videos that uh, respiratory physiology uh, in the topics on ECMO, ARDS, uh, even in the PALIC, uh, which one you have thought. So those were giving. Uh, this was like uh, uh, crystallizing our concepts, sir. So the concepts which I have read from the book, it's the whole the day which I spent to read the topic. So will be discussed or summarized within an hour. So obviously it was giving an edge over the uh, reading, sir. So it was uh, really helpful only, sir. Okay. So do you observe any pattern in which these questions are asked in need? For example, they, are they focusing on any particular uh, subjects or it is random and it is variable? Like, what is your opinion about that? Yes, sir. Uh, I was giving exam for the past uh, three sessions. So what I have found that I, I used to write all those past uh, questions uh, and I used to revise for every exam. So but what I have found that the repeated questions are a little less only, sir. The questions may be asked from the same topic. The core uh, critical care topic will be the same, but the questions will be really variable. And the I, I one thing I observed is that uh, calculations is the one uh, which they repeatedly ask, sir, that we have to be more uh, concentrating. Around some five to six questions uh, of calculations will come in every session. Other than that, uh, statistics questions, sometimes they may ask like five to six questions. Sometimes they may not ask also. Sometimes the guidelines question, they may ask some few guidelines, but uh, sometimes they may not ask. The questions is really variable. And I found that uh, the standard is getting more higher and higher uh, every session. Sir. Previously, uh, the last session, if I may, may write uh, the toppers used to score like 55 plus. But in this uh, session, it's like, 49 um, maximum score out of 80 is like 49 50 around that sir i think more critical care and concepts are getting more and more higher with each session sir that is what i understood yes sir that is what we also tried like when um, uh, uh, i was able i was making videos in marrow initially i thought okay i should proceed with these important areas then i felt like we should make the core concepts of critical care like ventilation, yes. ECMO, CRRT. So it is these yes. aspects which are the core uh, concepts in which critical care is there. Rest all is the overlap between general pediatrics and uh, critical care, which you can yes, go sir. through the book. So that is why uh, I specifically focused on these areas. So that those candidates, if they are asking questions too specialized, they should be able to understand and then uh, go about. So I'm very happy that that crystallized and materialized for you uh, and helped you a lot. So my last question to you in this interview is, what is your advice to those who uh, had put all their efforts, but they were unfortunate to not get a rank? And for those who are attempting, going to attempt this exam for the first time. So what is your um, advice to these participants? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, the the uh, when we compare the amount of seats and the number of people giving the exam, it is, uh, as, as far as I say, for pediatrics, the proportion is, the seats of pro, uh, proportion is really very less, sir. So the, it doesn't, dip the, the people who scored 10th rank and the top rank may not be that much different in the knowledge. I would say that for sure, sir. It is just uh, the some edge over the other person and some matter of luck which is helping them. Uh, even sure. it, it has helped me also. So the real thing is they have to be consistent and they should not give up on uh, giving the exams in the further sessions. Uh, and one thing I observed is the when we, uh, uh, it, it's like three fourth of our preparation is like whatever the concepts and question and question bank we are answering. One fourth is how we go cool head and uh, how we approach the exam, sir. It is that exam date, how cool we, uh, it is just in 90 minutes you have to answer all those 80 questions. So in between many problems, calculations will be there. It will take much time. So we'll be chill. We should be very chill, sir, in approaching the exam. That actually plays a major role, I think, sir. 
uh, that definitely I, I do uh, agree yes, I, I do agree you uh, need to be very yeah. much so level I, I approach with some kind of yes sir yes sir some amount of stress during the exam will reduce the amount of marks sir when we approach it with some chill mind if really will can score good sir yeah. so um, uh, I, I thank you a lot for helping uh, uh, the other candidates like with your suggestions and I do agree that you need to be level-headed when you are going for any competition let it be a competitive examination or any competition you should not be under stress even though how much of a stress you have so you should be go with a calm and composed mind for you to perform effectively that is the logic uh, behind this and yes. another most important thing is your core passion towards critical care, which will drive you to perform. Like uh, if you have that passion towards the subject, no, it's not like you need to get into some DM, but if you want yes. to get into critical care, so it is that passion yes, that will help you to go on and on. Even if you fail, it, it will uh, pull you up. It will energize you again to go for uh, one more attempt so that you achieve your goals. So uh, I thank Dr. Narmanan for participating in this interview and giving his inputs uh, regarding um, yes, uh, how he had worked and uh, what all uh, uh, strategies that he followed. So thanks a lot, Dr. Narmanan, and my best wishes for you into the program. So you are entering the program. I have been through this program. Um, and it is going to be a tough yes, program sir. in whatever uh, institute that you are going to go. So my best wishes for you uh, for the next three years. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And thanks I, a lot. I, thanks I, a just lot. A one word about, sir. I really want to thank my, uh, yes, sir. I really want to thank my tutors, my family and my uh, wife. Uh, to the, everyone who guided me and this uh, institution, both the JIPMER and uh, the SPIMS institution, which uh, helped me during this preparation period, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Dr. Mahan.